another A-level computer science video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on elementary and composite data types. Elementary data types, also known as primitive data types, are a set of basic data types from which all other data types are constructed. Elementary or primitive data types include integers, which are whole numbers, floats, which are decimal numbers, Booleans, which can hold a value of either true or false. Character, which is a single character from a character set. Reference, sometimes known as pointer, which is a value referring to another object's address in memory. Or enumeration, where a variable may take any value from a specified list. An example of enumeration might be a football player's position in a football simulation. This would come from a list of possible positions, such as goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, or forward, and the value could be any of these, but no other values. Composite data types are made up of groups of other types of data. For example, a string is made up of a group of characters. Other composite data types include arrays, lists, and tuples, all of which are made up of groups of elementary data types and other composite data types as well. For instance, an array can include an array as one of its members. Both arrays and lists give us a way to store multiple pieces of data under a single identifier. However, there are some important differences that you must be aware of. Arrays contain many elements, but they must all be of the same data type. For a list, they can contain many elements, and these may possibly have different data types they may have all the same data type. Arrays are static data structures. This means they can't grow or shrink in size after being declared. So you have to know how big you want the array to be before you actually declare it. Lists, on the other hand, are a form of dynamic data structure. That means they can grow or shrink after they've been declared. In Python, there are actually only lists, defined with square brackets. However, we can effectively create arrays by only using items of the same data type in a list and only applying methods appropriate to an array. Therefore, we wouldn't do things like append to the array or remove from the array. A 1D array or list has a single group of items such as all the scores on a class test. For instance, if the class had four students, they might have scores of eight, seven, five, and nine. Remember, if we were creating a list, the values would not all have to be of the same data type. So we might, for instance, store a variety of information about a student, such as their name, age, and date of birth. Arrays and lists are both zero indexed, meaning the first item, eight, in our scores array, is in position zero. Is accessed using the format array or list name and then in square brackets, the position of the item you want to retrieve. So scores one would retrieve the item in position one in the array, remembering it's zero index. So position zero has eight, position one has seven in it. Position two, incidentally, would have five and position three would have one. A 2D array has groups of groups of items, such as all the scores on all the class tests. Essentially, we're talking about an array of arrays. Here, in our example, we have scores, and each member of scores is now an array with the scores for one particular test for each of our four students. A 2D array can be visualised as a table of values. The format for referencing an item in a 2D array or list is the array or list name, and in the first set of square brackets, we say which array we would like to reference. In the second set of square brackets, we say which position we would like to reference. So scores 2, 0 would be telling us to look in array 2 and look in position 0 of array 2, which, as you can see, has the value 6. A 3D array has groups of groups of groups. This means it's an array that contains elements which are themselves arrays, which themselves contain elements that are arrays they can be visualized as a set of tables. The format for referencing an item in a 3D array or list is 
the array list or name, then in square brackets, which table we want to access, then which array in that table we want to access, and then which column in that table we want to access. So scores 0, 1, 2 will tell us to go to the table in position 0, in this case, class A scores array, and then it would say go to array 1, and then it would say go to position 2 in that, and you can see in this case the value of that is 7. Here's a better look at our 3D array example. So we have our marks array, which is a 3D array, as shown by the green brackets. It contains three elements, each of which is an array itself. Each of these arrays represents the marks received by students from three different classes. These are shown by the blue brackets. Each of these classes ran three tests, so they each contain elements that themselves are arrays, the red arrays, and these show the marks for any individual test for the students in that particular class. Python has a number of list methods that you'll need to become familiar with. All of these methods are applied using the format listName.methodName and then in parentheses you might or might not need to supply a parameter. For instance, names.append Bob would add the name Bob to the end of the list called names. Understanding and being able to use these methods will be essential in later lessons when we're building abstract data types such as queues and stacks. A tuple is another similar type of data structure to a list or array in that it contains multiple values under a single identifier. The key difference with a tuple is that it is immutable. This means it cannot be changed once it has been defined. In Python, a tuple is defined using round brackets instead of square brackets. They are accessed using the same notation as an array or list. So for instance, sizes one would refer to the item in position one in the tuple above, which is medium. If you try to edit, remove, or append to a tuple, you will receive an error message because you can't do that with tuples. The record data structure is not available in Python, but can be mimicked either by using text files with comma separated values, arrays of dictionaries, or by using classes in object oriented programming. You still need to be aware of it, even if you're studying Python, because the theory could be tested in the exams. Records allow for a record structure to be defined. This shows the elements that a record contains and their data type. So we could define a record such as student that would always be requesting a forename, surname, date of birth, and student number. Once a record structure has been defined, a variable can then be created with the data type of that type of record and data assigned to its attributes. This may be as in the case of the first example here, where we have the student one variable being created and a record being assigned to it that's blank and then using dot notation to assign values to it. Or it may be that the values are passed in as parameters when we create the record. Dot notation is also how we access elements of a record and records themselves can be elements in an array so that we can store a group of records together. That brings us to the end of this video on elementary and composite data types. Join me again soon when I'll be taking a look at abstract data types. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.